So you're probably watching this video because you've searched for something along the lines of oh, what is Docker, what is Docker used for, or something like that. Well, if you did, then you are in the right place because in this video, I'll explain Docker, how it works, and how to create a Docker container. And I'll also show you how to set up Docker on your virtual private server, so make sure to stick around till the end of this video. All right, so starting off, Docker is a software platform that helps you create, test, and run apps really easily. Easily. It puts everything your app needs, like code, tools, and settings, into a standardized unit called a container. I mean, you can literally see it on the Docker logo with the whale carrying a bunch of containers. Now, these containers are super lightweight and portable, and they don't depend on the computer they run on or any other containers. Now, this means that you can run Docker container on any machine with Docker installed, and your apps will work the same way every single time. So in order to actually understand how Docker works, you first have to know its key components. One of them is Docker Engine, which is the core of Docker and is responsible for creating and managing the containers. And this Docker Engine thing has three major components in and of itself. The first one is the server or daemon, in other words, which is basically a program that runs in the background of your computer and manages all Docker-related tasks like building, running, and distributing containers. Now, the second one is the Docker API a set of rules that allows programs to communicate with the Docker daemon and give it actual instructions. And the command line interface CLI, a tool Docker command used to send commands to the Docker daemon, basically. So uh, these are the Docker engine components. Now, other important elements are Docker image, which is a read-only template used to build containers containing application code and dependencies. And then there's Docker Hub, which is a cloud based repository for finding and sharing container images. A Docker file, by the way, is a script with instructions for building a Docker image. And finally, a Docker registry is a storage and distribution system for Docker images supporting both public and private storage. Well, now that we know some of the main elements, here's how Docker actually works. So the Docker CLI sends your commands, like basically creating or running containers, to the Docker daemon, which then then carries out those instructions. The daemon then uses Docker images to create and manage containers that run your applications. Now, Docker also uses Linux kernel features like namespaces and C groups to keep containers isolated from one another and limit their access to system resources. Now, this isolation ensures security and allows multiple containers to run on the same system without interfering with each other. Well, now that I've told you all of this information, the real question is why should one actually use Docker? Well, the short answer is that Docker makes things simpler, faster, and way more reliable. To be more specific, Docker ensures consistency. And as I've mentioned, Docker lets developers package an app with all its dependencies into a single container, which ensures the app performs consistently no matter where it's run. Plus, Docker makes deploying apps a whole a lot easier. By bundling your app and all its dependencies into a container, you can really quickly and reliably set it up across different environments without any headaches at all. And since Docker containers are super lightweight, everything runs faster. You can spin them up, scale them, or shut them down in absolutely no time. Moreover, Docker also supports microservices architecture, enabling apps to be built as smaller independent pieces that boost scalability, flexibility, and fault tolerance. And finally, Docker uses system resources really effectively. I mean, running multiple containers on one host maximizes resource usage, cutting costs while also improving efficiency. However, Docker images can clutter your system over time, and to avoid this, you should delete Docker images regularly to reclaim valuable disk space. And you can check this article out, which the link for will also be in the description below, to see how to do exactly that. There are many different Docker use cases there. Some of the most common include streamlining development environments, enabling microservices architecture, supporting continuous integration and continuous deployment, building cloud-native applications, and enhancing 
DevOps practices. All right, now that you understand kind of what Docker is and why it's actually useful, let's dive into actually creating a Docker container. Now we'll start by building a Docker image, walk through writing a Docker file, and then move on to creating a Docker container. Finally, I'll also briefly show you how to actually run it. So I'm gonna do this with you, so don't stress out. It's gonna be all super step-by-step. -step. Okay, so let's start with the Docker image. Image. And as I've explained earlier, it's a blueprint for your container holding all the code libraries and dependencies your application actually needs to run. When you run Docker image, whether it's one you own or publicly share one from platforms like Docker Hub, it turns into a Docker container. And I mean, sure, you can create your own Docker image from scratch, but it's usually easier to start with a base image. Docker Hub has tons of base images ready to go so you can just build on top of those. So first, let's start this off. Okay, so first, I'll log into your VPS using an SSH client like Putty. I'll also leave a link below to an article covering how to do that if you're interested in that. And once you're in, you can use this command to see all the Docker images on your system, this one right here. As you can see, there is none, so let's change that. So for this specific tutorial, I'm going to pull an image based on my SQL. Now, if you need more details about the image, you can always check its page on Docker Hub, by the way. Now, to pull the MySQL image into your current directory, use this command, docker pull. And then write the name or ID of the image you're pulling. So in this case, it's gonna be docker pull and MySQL. Now, if you're not super comfortable with command line, there's another way to create Docker images, which is by using EasyPan. Now, this tool gives you a simple graphical interface to manage Docker images and makes it really easy to create Docker images for apps written in languages like Node.js, Ruby, Python, PHP, Go, and Java. It handles a lot of the heavy lifting, like setting up environments and dependencies as well. And if you're using hosting or Zoom VPS, hosting, they even offer an Ubuntu 24.04 64-bit with an easy panel template. You can install it directly from the operating system menu in your VPS dashboard. But anyway, both options get the job done, which is most important. Just choose what works best for you and for your skills and projects, obviously. Okay, now let's move on to the Docker file, which is a text file that tells Docker how to build your image. And it's important to note here that a Docker file is not required if you're using a pre-built image from Docker Hub, like MySQL, which I'm using in this example. Uh, well, unless you want to customize or extend those images, then you'll need a Docker file. But if that's not part of your plans, just feel free to skip to this timestamp right here, where I'll show you how to run the image from Docker Hub directly. Okay, but now coming back to the Docker file. Here is an example of a really simple one. And as you can probably already tell, each command in a Docker file creates a new layer in your Docker image. And let's break this example down. So basically this line right here pulls the latest Ubuntu image and sets it as the base. Every other layer you add will build on top of this. Now this one, sets the working directory inside the container. It creates a new layer basically and acts as the context for all the following commands. Meanwhile, copy and two dots here, copies all the local files into the dash app folder in the container, adding a layer with your project files. Now, this line over here is responsible for installing CURL in the container. This creates another layer with the updated package list and the installed CURL package. And finally, we have this thing right over here, which defines the default command that runs when the container starts. In this case, it'll run CURL and fetch the example URL. Okay, guys, now let's talk a bit about why efficient image layering is so important here. Well, each command in a Docker file creates a new layer, and most importantly, Docker caches these layers. So if you rebuild the image and nothing has changed in a specific layer, Docker reuses it instead of rebuilding it from scratch. This 
This makes the process faster and way more efficient. Plus, optimizing your layers can shrink the image size, so it's quicker to pull, push, or deploy it. This is especially useful for businesses that need really speedy deployments to stay competitive. And I mean, a well-optimized image saves time and resources, making your workflow a whole lot smoother. Okay, so now if you've got a new Docker file ready to go, it's time to build a container. So now you can navigate to the directory where it's saved and use the Docker build command to start creating a new image. Just make sure to replace the image name or image ID with the tag name you want for your image. Once the image is built, you can start it with the docker run command. Just replace container name with whatever name you want to use. But if you've decided to skip building an image by yourself and want to use the image that uh, we've already pulled from Docker Hub, like the MySQL in my example image, you can just run it directly by typing docker run MySQL. Now, if you need to specify any environment variable, such as the root password, you can find this information on the Docker Hub image page. Now, if you manage to successfully run your container or maybe even a couple of them, you can use the docker ps command with the dash a option to see all of the containers running on your system. And also add sudo at the start like this. If you need root permission, let me show you just like this right here. And to check the top process running inside a container, use docker top my container command, just like this one. And if you want to get more details Details about a container, like its ID, CPU usage, or memory usage, try Docker stats. And to stop a running container, type Docker stop my container. And to terminate a container completely, use Docker kill my container. All right, now moving on, when you want to expose your container's application to the outside world, like for web servers, databases, or anything that needs external access, you'll need to map. Ports. Now, to map ports between your host and the container, use the dash P option with Docker run, for example, like this. And also, if you want to ensure that your data will still be there, even if your container stops, gets deleted, or is updated, consider using volumes. Now, using volumes makes your setup more durable and way easier to manage. Plus, you can share volumes between multiple containers, which is super handy for multi-container setups. And also, for persistent storage, you can attach uh, a volume using the dash V option, so just like this. And yeah, that's basically it. So these were just a few common commands for running and managing Docker containers. Of course, learning all of them can be a real hassle. That's why we've prepared this Docker cheat sheet with most common commands so you can have them readily at hand at any time. So make sure to check it out. I'll add the link in the video description as well. So definitely it's really, really handy. Oh, and while you're scrolling to the description to check that out, make sure to stop and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. All right, now let's just step away from the commands because there are other really important practices you shouldn't forget if you want to ensure an efficient Docker containerization process. Now, one such practice is keeping your containers super lightweight. Now that might sound, I mean, pretty obvious for some of you, but smaller containers are way faster, useful fewer resources and are way more secure. So make sure to use lightweight base images and share components across similar images as well. Also, apply multi-stage builds to include only necessary components in the final image. And don't forget to remove unnecessary files and consolidate commands to minimize image layers. Now the next tip is to use official images. They can be found on Docker Hub and are marked with a badge labeled official image. They are secure reliable, frequently updated for vulnerabilities, and provide a solid, really solid foundation for building efficient applications. Now moving on, be sure to limit container permissions. To avoid problems, avoid running containers with root privileges and set containers to read-only mode when possible to minimize security risks. Now similarly, it's always really smart to secure sensitive information. So basically store credentials and settings as environment variables instead of hard 
hard coding them into your Docker files. This keeps sensitive data hidden and makes updates way easier. And also try to leverage container orchestration. Now, what I mean by this is that you can use tools like Docker Compose and Kubernetes to simplify managing multi-container apps. Now, these tools can handle scaling, distribute traffic, and let you deploy complex setups like WordPress with its database with just one single command. And lastly, guys, if you use Hostinger's VPS or Docker Hosting, you can use the Kodi AI Assistant to make managing your VPS way easier. It can really help with various things from installation guides to even running Docker read-only commands for you. I mean, lots of great stuff here. So for example, you could say, give me a list of containers in my Docker installation, and it will provide you with the list. You'll find Kodi in the left panel, by the way, of your VPS dashboard, if you're wondering. So definitely check it out. And for those of you who don't have a Docker VPS hosting plan just yet and want to enjoy features like free automatic weekly backups, a malware scanner, and the AI assistant Kodi, click the first link in the description to choose the plan that suits you best and the duration that you prefer. And plus, don't forget that you can save an extra 10% off by using our code VPS10, so don't forget it. Now, the installation process is super quick and easy. Now, once your purchase is complete, the onboarding process will start right away. So you'll have to select your server location and the closer the location is to you the better and then decide whether to add the monarchs malware scanner as an additional feature then just finish by creating a password or adding an ssh key and that's it guys in just a few minutes the installation process on ubuntu will be complete once it's all done you can either access your docker vps through hosting your dashboard or by copying this command and using it to access your vps via terminal now if you end up on Hostinger's dashboard, you'll find the Browse Terminal button at the top right of your Docker VPS dashboard. And there you have it. That's basically it. Now, if you have a VPS hosting plan on Hostinger, not the Docker one, but a different one, or if you love a hands-on approach, check out this guide because it covers how to install Docker on Ubuntu using both Hostinger's VPS template and a manual method. Now, you'll find the link in the description of the video as always. So, I mean, as I've covered in this video, Docker is an amazing platform for application deployment and management. I mean, anything from streamlining development environments to optimizing DevOps practices. But if you're ready to take things to the next level, consider exploring Kubernetes. It's perfect for managing containers at scale and boosting your workflow even more. So if you're curious, check out this video where we break down what Kubernetes is and how to actually use it. And also make sure to subscribe to this channel channel and hit that like button if you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.